never been undertaken. More so since the coming of the government of President Muhammad Buhari that made fighting corruption one of the cardinal principles of the government. But everyone knows that you cannot fight corruption if accountants are not carried along, particularly financial corruption. Any attempt to establish accountability, giving value for money, due process and the rest can really not succeed without accountants. That is why as national accountants under the auspices of the Association of Nigerian Accountants and Convergy on Lafia for the annual mandatory continuous professional development program, MCPD, we feel obliged to take on the number one Anand person in Nigeria to share some of his thoughts about how we can deal with corruption from the accountant's perspective. Good evening and welcome to the Pathfinder. It's an NTL Afia program, personality program, where people who play roles in societal development are called upon to come and tell us what they are doing. I am yours sincerely, Sayan Bunswale. With me on the program is the President's Association of Nigerian Accountants in the person of Professor Muhammad Akano Menoma, former Vice Chancellor Nasarasset University, and now a directing staff at the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies. Sir, you are welcome to yes, the Pathfinder. Thank you very much. I'm not a directing staff, I'm still a lecturer with Nasarasset University. <laughs> <laughs> so, you are welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, being a personality program, we will first of all start from you. Your, uh, who is Professor Menoma? Uh, Professor Menoma is a staff of Nasara State University, KP, uh, currently, and uh, also the President Association of National Accountants of Nigeria. And uh, within the next 20 days or so, uh, I'll be handing over to the next president, the incoming president of the association, Professor uh, Benjamin Otisioma. Uh, I started my primary school education in Lafia here, uh, in Nama Primary School, Lafia, in 1973. And I went to government secondary school, Miyongo. Thereafter, I went to Amadou Bello University for BSc, MSc, and PhD. Uh, while I graduated uh, after the BSc, I started teaching Amadou Bello University as a graduate assistant. After a stint with NCR, a company in Lagos, uh, for about five months, immediately after my MYC, before I, I returned to the Zaria for academy for shoes. Uh, there, uh, I've been, been employed as a graduate assistant. I went through the MSc program, the PhD program, and I rose to the position of senior lecturer in the university before I left uh, Amory Bello University for uh, uh, University of Abuja. Uh, thereafter, I left for Kaduna State University, then Nasara State University, where I became a professor of accounting and finance. Wow, that is a no mean achievement, mm -hmm. being a professor of accountancy and finance. Uh, now, would you like to enlighten members of the public? What is the difference between a chartered accountant and a national accountant? Yeah, they basically the work they do is the same, but the the nomenclature, uh, the Association of National Accountants of Nigeria felt that it is a body that is chartered, but the individual is certified. So uh, and uh, when when you find out that all over the world the you, 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 the, the real uh, issue of being chartered it is the institution that is chartered just like not we, the individual not the individual like we are chartered by decree uh, of 1976 uh, now uh, law of 2004 but our individual members are certified to do the kind of work they are supposed to do. So, uh, ANAN is a chartered body, but in the members of uh, the association are certified. Yes. Okay. Now, coming to what accountants from all over Nigeria have converged on last year to do, the mandatory continuous professional development program. Why so? The, basically, we have um, about uh, a lot of reasons why we are here. Uh, uh, the mandatory continuous professional development program is a tradition of the association 
uh, coming from the belief that uh, you cannot uh, get some of this knowledge while in school, that certain events occur uh, every day and that you need to be abreast with the new developments. So we felt that as accountants, we should have at least one period in a year that you will come and uh, re-educate yourself of the happenings, the developments within the profession. And that is why we instituted this program. But in order to do it, uh, that it is principally for purposes of learning and refreshing. But we also felt that you, you cannot be on an island of your own. So you need to associate with other professionals that are in the field and are operating in other environments. So we create uh, an atmosphere where people can now uh, socialize, uh, change, exchange ideas. And that it is also important that as accountants, uh, the environment is also very important. You need to understand other people's environment. So the, you need to move from one place to the other to see what is happening in order. So the issue of familiarization. And that as accountants, you have, well, during your work, you will find information that it is only you that knew about it. Some other people that work in different terrain may not understand that kind of a thing. So there is a need to share that kind of experience. So the experiences that others have, we, we create an environment so that within the last one year, what have you found that is new in the profession? So that then you, know, the exchange yes, of ideas. Yes, you, you, you will now share with other colleagues the kind of ideas you have that you feel are, are new in the development program. It is also important that we also assess our skills. We also assess our techniques. That you cannot continue to do the same thing and expect a different result. So from time to time, we put these uh, uh, skills and techniques into tests by way of assessing them, whether they are capable of giving us new conditions and new uh, new results. That is why we are in life here. Okay, now I hear that there is a focus yes. for this year's particular yes. MCPD. The focus for this year is re-engineering the profession uh, uh, after the COVID-19 pandemic. The idea is that the COVID-19 has come with it uh, some other peculiarities that certain things that we don't know about before have come up. People have to work from house, people have to use computer, people have to uh, do different things that they are not used to. There are a lot of losses in the economy as a lot of manpower, um, man hour loss. So we, we need to, as accountants, take stock of, of these things that happen. So that's why we say that for this year, we are looking at engineering the profession in order to address the, the uh, peculiarities of COVID-19 pandemic. Okay. Mm. Now, earlier in my introductory remarks, I alluded to the significant role of accountants mm. in the fight against corruption mm. and particularly in the demand for accountability. Why do you think the role of accountants is so important that it is always emphasized? Yeah, you see, the, the truth of the matter is that accountants are the gatekeepers. Accountants are the people that actually have in trust the resources. Accountants are the people that generate the revenue. So the, the point of corruption, uh, basically of attitude, uh, basically you are doing areas of generating revenue, are uh, also areas of expenditure. So you find out that in all this, even in areas of training, where we, we talk about ethics, in all this, accountants are at the center. You cannot find any institution that there is no, no somebody that is telling you how much is raised, how much is spent. Even if you are doing nothing, you are just spending the money to do certain things, you, you, there is some level of accountability in that, that, that kind of uh, uh, things you do. So you, that is why if accounting, if, if corruption is, uh, in terms of financial corruption, is about either uh, in the process of raising money or in the process of uh, spending money, then definitely accountant is involved. So, but you, you find out that because uh, it is actually an attitude thing, uh, and it is that we, we need as accountants to address it from about three major uh, areas. First, from the point of view of the curriculum that as we are teaching accountants, as we are training accountants, we must make it that 
uh, integrity is the key thing. That uh, what is important is to be sure that members uh, uh, make sure that they don't look at the resources that is not their own. That that fundamental teaching is, is very essential. And so it is those that are teaching accounting from that point of view. Then when it comes to issue of raising revenue, uh, what is important is to develop a framework that people cannot uh, go away with the, the funds. So uh, your, your mechanism for purposes of raising revenue should be such that all receipts must be accounted for. And it is the accountants that can develop that kind of framework that ensure that there is a, a form of collection that uh, there is no leakage. And all, when it comes to also the issue of expenditure, it is the accountants that uh, should be able to develop control mechanisms that will ensure that it is every time we get value for money. And finally, uh, even after the expenditure is done, it is accountants that will come and audit the process and audit the expenditure. So in that also, uh, accountants must also uh, do the best practice uh, by ensuring that the uh, state what it, it is there and that their opinions are in the best of tradition. Mm. Now, you were talking about auditing. Is there a difference between an auditor and an accountant? Yes. The, the audit is an assurance process that every auditor is an accountant. Primarily, you need to have the basic training. Like they said, for you to catch a thief, you must also act as a thief. So the, the auditor is somebody that must have learned all the techniques of an accountant and then come and review the work he has done. He knows all the work that but an accountant does. He does. But accountant may not necessarily be an auditor because if his work is just to uh, present reports uh, and, and, and stop at that, then he may not necessarily do the assurance process. But the person that is going to look at the work of another uh, to give an opinion it is the one. He may need another extra tra tra training uh, to be able to be the, audit the auditor. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, let's leave accountancy alone. Being a former vice chancellor, uh, your views have been well expressed at different fora about the quagmire we have, incessant strike by academic staff of the universities. And apart from the strike by the academic, once you settle with the academic staff, then the non-academic staff will start their own. Uh, some of us are really not understanding why, for example, my son she spent six years to do a first degree due to incessant strike at all. What are we going to do to see the end of these strikes? The, what we can do is actually to, to be more objective in the things or by agreements. So I say by disagreements is that there might be a situation where people will disagree that this is what we want and somebody is not actually giving that at, that can create that kind of condition that will make some people to go on strike. The other one is the agreement that people will sit down and agree that this is what we agree to do, this is what we agree to give, but at the end of the day it is not done. That can also result to strike. So you, you find that, that the, only, uh, uh, why, uh, the only way to avoid strike is to be as sincere as possible. What can be done, let it be agreed to be done and it is done. Who will be sincere? The, both the government and the unions. Both the government and the unions. Uh, uh, what, is, what is given the kind of uh, uh, situation we have is that the unions are not sincere. They will ask for things that they know is impossible. The government is not sincere because they don't want the initial trouble because they want to uh, cross a particular bridge, maybe during election. They will say, okay, we agree, we're going to do it. And once they cross the election, they don't do it. So, so that is the kind of thing I'm saying. That, but if at the end of the day, the union asks only for the things that are, are achievable, that uh, they, they believe can be done and they say the ways that can be done. Say, for instance, even the telephone that we're talking about, it is a product of the unions. 
they say that this thing can be done and they say this is how it can be done and it was achieved so if unions would be that reasonable and present matters on what to be done and how to do it that is not going to be detrimental to the other uh, areas of development of the people for instance if, if you say that uh, you should just be given 40 percent of uh, budget without minding the fact that there is problem with the health the, without minding the fact that there is problem of water without minding the fact that there will be other problems that are required to be addressed by the government then that creates a permanent problem that every day there will be strife but if people are going to be reasonable and only accept and the government will also uh, make it open that this is our capacity this is what we can do and let everybody know that those ones that can accept it let them accept it those ones cannot accept it, let them quit the system so that those that are willing to do it continue uh, with the system so without that we will continue to have this problem of strife. what of the interunion jealousy for example between aso and non-academic staff union is that 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 is uh, a, a not a major problem uh, except for the insincerity uh for me uh the unions should have a, a common demand for things that are common okay. and they can have different demands for but there is no reason why somebody should go to negotiate for for instance salary and should not talk about all the workers of the university there should in matters of salary there it should be it matters that it is for all workers of the university but if you have an, yes if you have a matter for allowance of teaching for instance that is a peculiar yes then, then you can those who teach then you can negotiate that if you have something to do with travelings people that don't travel you can negotiate that but once it is something that it is uh that something that every person in the university system can do then let it be a single way around it but those things that are peculiar to you then you can discuss about it uh, alone and then ask for it but like the, the situation what we have in the university is that you will see uh, ASU is claiming a uh, hazard allowance non-academic staff are claiming hazard allowance and the government will not agree that for ASU it is this much for SANU it is that much it creates disparity you have a uh, salary you say that this one has its own salary scale different from this one has its own salary scale different it creates a problem so what so do you think is a way out the way out is to harmonize this thing and only give peculiarity uh, uh, particular uh, salary uh, allowance to those that actually are different from the kind of things they do and that way there won't be a problem of saying you, know, you have given that person you did not give me you are given that person you did not give me when i'm also entitled to it well there's one other issue yes sir which many people wonder why a situation affecting federal universities and then state universities join when they are not having the same pay master you see the the, the problem is uh, fundamental because you have agreed that uh, university uh, education is concurrent that is what the state government can do it the federal government can do it but you also agree that there is a central uh, monitoring unit That's that is the NUC commission, commission that they are, they are supposed to actually regulate both the federal university and the state university and it is also allowed that they can in the constitution allowed that people can can associate anyhow across the board so they they have a union that cut across states and federal universities and they've agreed that the standards of these universities are supposed to be the same so if that is the case that both the federal university and the state university and the state governments that go to establish these universities also agree that they are going to provide whatever it is that is the national minimum okay. so uh, when it comes to matters of agitation therefore the totality of the union will, agi uh, will agitate that everybody should enjoy that kind of a thing so but at a particular point you may find that that uh, maybe the state governments are implementing the much they want to do 
but the federal government is not doing. So if the union wants to go on strike, it is the totality of his union that is going to go on strike. It is not about whether you as an individual, you are cut out for or you are not cut out for. Because one day you may also have the problem that they don't have, but because of the strength of the union to fight for everybody. So they, you may need also their support to also fight for you. But the paymaster is different. The paymaster is different, but the paymasters have agreed to do the same thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, parents never understand this. Yes. Well, let's leave this problem alone. Now, what is your advice to young Nigerians who wish to take up career as accountants? That do they need to do? That first, the, the profession requires a lot of knowledge. Just know that you are coming into a discipline that is changing every day. That for you to be ready accountants for the future, uh, you need to do a lot of studies. That uh, it is not as people think about it, that accountants are very rich people or accountants are misers. That you come into the profession with a way of thinking of how to develop yourself and also develop the profession. Uh, you can be very comfortable because uh, uh, definitely what you are earning would be comparable to any other profession. That they are welcome, but it is not a, 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 a profession that will make you very rich easily. It is a, a profession that requires a lot of hard work. It is a, 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 a profession that requires a lot of intelligence. It is a, a, a profession that requires a lot of dedication. It is a, it is very important that you have a lot of integrity because other people's resources will be in your hands. It is uh, a profession that requires a lot of exposure because you need to study a lot of other things and what, what other people do. That uh, accounting profession is for the noble people. That it is important that you know that you are going to be entrusted with the resources of other people and that you are supposed to guard it jealously. Now, we are running out of time, but there is uh, this question that is itching me. So within the remaining time, maybe you will be able to do justice to it. This question of several models that have been employed in Nigeria, TSA, e paying systems, and the like, as uh, attempts to block leakages and ensure transparency. How far so far in your own assessment? Yeah, the, the best thing that has happened to the, the financial system is the introduction of the payment systems that are, are definitely difficult to buy court, uh, to, 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 to withdraw money without being noticed. Uh, you, you find out that uh, first, if you have a system where there is centralized collection, then all receipts are noted, all receipts are known, and everybody can see it at the, book, uh, at the touch of a button. That brings a lot of transparency, and it is difficult for people to carry out people's money. Then the ease of payment, but of course it comes along with it the Yahoo Yahoo people, that uh, if you are not careful and you do not instill a lot of control, somebody can also steal all your money. Uh, and uh, with, uh, within seconds, uh, once you allow the person to have the, the kind of security features that he can utilize your money. But uh, for the economy, uh, the best thing that has happened uh, is our ability to be able to assemble uh, all the, uh, these kind of uh, systems and models uh, that uh, protects the interests of people that are really sincere in managing uh, resources. Well, thank you very much. Uh, if you have any final word to Nigerians. Yeah, that it is important that uh, our peace is anything, you, we should do anything to maintain the peace because nothing happens without having peaceful. But it is also very important for our leaders to know that the fundamentals for a peaceful environment is that poverty must be addressed. Uh, and, and, and once people are hungry, you cannot predict uh, uh, how they will behave. So it is important that as we are thinking of development, we must also be thinking of how we can address the issues of poverty and hunger in our land. Uh, and that is fundamental if we want to address this idea of uh, crisis here and there that is uh, bedeviling our, our country. That our leaders must address the issue of poverty and hunger. That that is the starting point 
for us to be able to have a peaceful environment. Well, thank you very much, thank sir, you. for sparing the time to do so. Thank you. And you, my dear viewer, I'm sure if you had followed us in the last 25 minutes or so, you would have really been enriched in your knowledge about Nigeria and how corruption is moving forward, the situation of accountancy and many other issues, particularly administration of university and the strike actions that we have been witnessing. And we have also had some insights on ways out. Keep it there with us, same time, same station next week as we bring you another interesting meeting on the Pathfinder.